Why would you want to water cool your computer? Because it looks cool, of course. Or because it is a much more efficient way to cool your system and enables you to push its components to the extreme, aka overclocking. And let's face it, who doesn't want to pimp out their computer a little? Everyone knows every light you add makes your computer go that much faster. The principle behind water cooling is always the same. You need a place to store water, some way to cool it, some type of block to transfer the heat from the device to the water, a pump to make the water go round, and some tubes and fittings to connect everything together. While there are some upsides to water cooling, such as having an awesome level of extreme, better cooling performance, and it can be quieter than only using fans under some circumstances, there are some drawbacks. Water cooling is a lot more expensive than regular air cooling. It is harder to set up, harder to clean, there is always a risk that the water will leak, and it is a pain to clean once every six months to a year, depending on the liquid you use and the complexity of your loop. Here are the basic components you will need for a simple water cooling loop. You will need a reservoir, some cooling liquid, a pump, some tubing, fittings, a CPU or in this case a chipset block, a GPU or graphics card block, a radiator and some fans. Let's start with the radiator. In this case we have what we call a double radiator, so it has room for two fans. The process is simple. Water flows in one of the inlet tubes goes through the little fins and goes all the way back and out the other tube. While this is going, the fans either pushing or pulling air through the fins cool the water. Now the fin density or the thickness of the reader, this is a pretty thin one, there are much thicker out there, decides the cooling performances of the radiator. The reservoir is simply additional space to store cooling liquid. In this case, this reservoir uses two drive bays to be installed. There's a hole at the top to fill in the liquid, the inlet port, and the outlet port. As you can see on this particular model, we have what we call a flow meter. Basically when the water comes in, it makes a wheel turn and it tells us how much flow we're getting. Because sometimes a liquid, it's hard to tell how much water or liquid is being pushed. Now the pump. The pump simply has an inlet and an outlet. It's just a spinning wheel that pushes the water through. It uses a Molex for power and has a little adapter to measure the RPMs. It's important to note it does not suck the water, it only pushes it, so it needs to be fed water. It uses a custom top for better performance. A CPU, or in this case a chipset block, always works the same way. Heat is transferred to the little spikes in the block and water absorbs heat by passing through them. The back makes contact with the chip, transfers heat with the help of thermal paste, and water takes most of the heat away. CPU blocks simply are larger and have smaller spikes, sometimes fins. A GPU block works the same way. Water flows in through an inlet, goes through the block, and comes out the other side. The GPU chip is always located where the water makes the most contact with the block to transfer the largest amount of heat as possible. In this case, the chip would be under the wavy lines. The whole block being made out of copper, in our case, nickel plated, acts as a giant heatsink to spread the heat of the rest of the components throughout the block and water cools the block. Thermal tape is used where the smaller chips make contact with the block. Tubing is simply a type of flexible plastic used to connect the components together. The important part to remember is the size of the outside diameter and the inside diameter, which will be dependent on the size of your fittings. For fittings, it's important to remember there are two types. You can have a barb type of fitting, like so, or a compression fitting, like this. Now you would push the tube on top and just simply screw on the cap back on to keep it on tight. While for the barb, well actually, I'll just show you right away. So for the barb, you would just simply push, just push the tube on it, it's going to be a tight fit. Once it's all the way in, to make sure nothing leaks out, you can either use a zip tie to tie it up, or you can use a clamp, like in this case. Now I won't push it all the way in because they're fairly tight and they're hard to put on, but once they're on, trust me, water won't leak out. Now for a compression fitting, which in my case I prefer, just put the cap on, push it on the fitting, once it's on nice and tight, squeeze the top back on and screw it in and it makes for a much much cleaner look but they are more expensive so basically they are both as efficient it's just the type of style 
and the price you're going to pay for them. Now for the cooling liquid, you'll want to use something like this. This is a pre-made liquid. It's UV reactant, it's green. Um, you could use distilled water if you want, just make sure you don't use regular tap water because there are minerals in there that could form deposits in your blocks and they could obstruct the flow. It's also important to know these liquids, the colored ones, have a tendency to make some deposits over time. After maybe six months to a year, the colorant will form together and will block your blocks. So it's important to clean them or simply use um, distilled water. So this concludes our very basic introduction guide to water cooling. While it can be overwhelming to get your feet wet, most do not regret doing so. Thanks for watching, remember you can like this video to help us out or subscribe to our channel and stop by our website to read more articles. Thanks.